good to go. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. New NSR Live Talk at a place that we know already, but in a different combination. Um, we are at Skydive City and it's the training of the Golden Knights 4 week team. Thank you for taking the time. Training day is over. We have a little break here. We, the planes are all um, shut down now because um, it's a little bit overcast, but you got your training completely done. Um, so we have had in the past, we know the Golden Knights by now, the Golden Knights hallway team, because we have had, we have had conversations before. And we have many conversations with Mr. Nicholas Hemlin, but we've never had them together. And we also have a new Golden Knights member. Um, we'll talk about this in a moment. Uh, thank you and welcome Skylar. Um, he, is, he is filming the Golden Knights in Forway now. And um, so let's begin with uh, Nicholas. Okay. You can actually begin with the sky. You can introduce, let's introduce the whole team with the sorts and everything from your position there. <laughs> Nick, you want to introduce yourself? Hi. So first class, Nick Berkman. Okay. Sergeant so first class, Michael Connors. Sergeant Skylar Romberg. Sergeant first class, Mitch Stockenberg. Sergeant first class, Jesse Stoller. Private contractor, <laughs> <laughs> mercenary. Nicholas Hamlin. <laughs> <laughs> and Kurt Gable never served. Um, uh, <laughs> shame, but yeah. but I was Berliner, so I wasn't allowed to serve in the German forces. Berliners were not allowed to. We were neutralized. Uh, so I have an excuse for that. Yeah. Anyway, so Sergeant um, Romberg. Um, we call you Skylar here, right? So we, we, we can do that. Yes. Nick, go ahead. How do you like your new, um, the, new, the guy who provides you now with the footage to tear them apart after the jumps? He's doing fantastic, actually. Yeah. Uh, first day here, they're like, hey, he's n hasn't done any video. And uh, Seriously? Yeah. You saw it yourself when we were debriefing. It's terrific. Coming from nowhere? How many jumps? About 2,100. No, I mean with the team now. Oh, zero, zero before this. Yeah, so you today is 37, right? 37 jumps, yeah. Oh, that's very impressive. Yeah. I mean, especially filming, mm -hmm. you're not even peeling or anything, which is a little bit easier. Yeah. I find as camera, you know, this is the tricky part, the beautiful stuff. Yeah. You know, when you see, I mean, uh, that, that's very impressive. So yeah. congratulations it's for that. It's kind of like you said. I, I wouldn't want to miss an opportunity for Nick to be able to rip my team apart. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I know he is. So he would give you hints too. So you know, it's not only the it's good motivation. the active or in front of the camera who he is tearing apart. He tears apart everybody. The Schleifer, the um, the American Schleifer. We have a German Schleifer who is called Sully Williams, and then we have um, the Swedish. Schleifer, and that is Nicholas. All right, so how, how did this work? You've been working with the team already for a little while, yeah. and you are preparing the team that will eventually beat you. I heard something like this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's, uh, so I've been working with them on and off since uh, 2019, uh, and uh, with this particular lineup, I mean, I was coaching you guys when, uh, Mitch and Mike joined the team. They just had been uh, picked from tryouts and they showed up at the tunnel with no jumpsuits. And uh, <laughs> so I've, I've been with them for, and Nick. Uh, I met Nick, I was coaching them out in Laurenburg and he was doing uh, something else on the other side of the airfield with a different group and they were in conversation with getting him on the team. So now they're all here. Scholar is a new addition with the veteran, uh, Captain Jesse. And uh, yeah, they're doing fantastic. Uh, three days of training now, and uh, very productive. 12, 13 jumps a day, and everything is coming together real quick. So uh, first day back, uh, technically they executed, in my opinion, better than they did at nationals. So they're, uh, I mean, this is just the first three days of a whole year. So I'm, I'm very hopeful. Well, you mentioned today that you are expecting um, the Golden Knights Hobby team. Of course, I mean, looking at the video, and I'm hoping we will get a summary, best of, best of the training in Zephyr Hills, so a few jumps at least, the bloopers too, of course. But um, 
it looks like a, almost by now already like a like a little mini version of Arizona SP by now. Is that do you see it in similar ways? Uh, no, I, I, they're standing on their own. Uh, as far as uh, like they're doing great, and I don't want to compare them to airspeed or anything else. They're doing their own thing, and they have their own little flair, their own little style that's different from ours. But uh, they train most of the time by themselves. So I'm coming in only for a, f uh, a few weeks uh, throughout the season, and they're full uh, full time doing four way and, and eight way. So they have two weeks here of training, and I'm only with them for like five days out of those two weeks. So most most of the training they do is on their own. And of course, I come in, coach, uh, do the best I can. And then when I'm not here, I usually stay in the loop by uh, uh, having all the videos online that I can review. Or, you know, I'm on call if they have questions, of course, because even though I'm coming and going, uh, I just want to make sure that they, you know, they stay on track or if they have any questions, I'm available. So. Yeah, keeping them on track is probably the littlest problem for you. You know, that's, uh, yeah. they're probably in pretty good order as of yes. US Army trained yep so that, that's a that's a good thing probably mu makes it much easier for for a coach i can tell you that because i'm have only worked with civilian teams <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, usually um just keeping the team together right for for a day mm -hmm. um efficiently is difficult enough so you don't have to deal with that that's that's a good thing i'm sure now i should have maybe i should have used a different word mini version um it just looks as clean. So if, if I would go on the, on the video and would put it into a little fast forward, it would begin to look like airspeed. You know, everything is technically and um, yeah, judging. Yeah, I, I think it's the same program for most teams that are trying to advance their technical uh, execution. You see Hayabusa even uh, getting McKelly uh, and uh, uh, Neil on board and now the new kid. It's a certain pace. You have to create an environment in mm -hmm. which they can practice and discover the technique. So that's maybe what everything looks like. And of course, I'm gonna come with my own airspeed flare, which is gonna be very similar. But at the same time, I'm a big proponent on, uh, as long as you fall within the accepted framework, you have your own personality a little bit. It's not like everyone looks the same. People fly a little bit different, and as as long as they're you know efficient and fast in the end of the day, uh, I, I feel like there's definitely room, and uh, you know there's a lot of things the Golden Eyes are doing really really well, and there's some stuff we got to work on, but it's a work in progress. And uh, this whole thing about what comes in 2025 <laughs> for the next on year, I think that's going to fall more into place after this year's nationals. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, results uh, so national September in Chicago is going to show where the field is and I, don't, I expect them to be very strong because this is what your third year together uh, more or less this is the uh, we haven't had three full years this I would say is the um, the finish of a of second year to be yeah. honest because Mitch was down for injury for um, you know quite some time I think four months in total so we, we've had unfortunately uh, breaks in training you know, over the last three years that um, have just kind of hindered our progression. But I would say one of the coolest things about working with Nick, especially the wealth of knowledge that he has, is the it's the environment that he allows us to operate in. So uh, we, we like to push back on him, not just, you know, to joke and, um, you know, prod, but it's also to help educate ourselves. And uh, there are times where we might strike a nerve and he makes him think about something. It doesn't happen often, but it has uh, every now and then. And he's like, you know what? Try it. And he just kind of gives us the, the flexibility and room to discover on our own. And sometimes, most of the time, we come back to him. We're like, yeah, you were right. That was not worth our time. But sometimes we have success, and it's just unique to us and our own skills and the way our minds work. And it's fluid, you know, fluid progression, if you want to call it that. Uh, and it's great because he allows us to have that space in a training environment. He's not so regimented. You know, it has to be this way. It has to be this mm -hmm. way. And a lot, of, a lot of the, you know, former coaches within this industry have been like that you know mm -hmm. so I think it allows the, the sport to rapidly grow and evolve and um, yeah I think it's uh, it's been really exciting to be part of it so as uh, just you as a veteran in the team uh, you have seen you have seen a lot of different forward teams by now including VFS and, and um, different lineups and different sides how would you um, how would you define the style that the Golden Knights Nick, Nick says you know it's 
you develop your own style. Mm -hmm. Can you already kind of um, define this in a certain way? How if you compare it to your other teams, for instance? Then yeah, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, I'll try to be as politically correct as I can for my former teammates. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think the Golden Knight way in the past, it's been, uh, you know, we, we had the benefit in the 70s and 80s and 90s to have the resources, to have the full-time commitment, you know, and, and we could get there by just doing reps all the time. And we could, you know, self-discovery mm -hmm. would get us there. I think that was an advantage most of the world didn't have at the time. And I think the innovation of wind tunnels and then experienced coaches, you know, former competitors coming in as, as an external coach really evolved the sport rapidly in the last 30 years. So, you know, we've seen this just exponential growth and, uh, you know, really from a better understanding of the mechanics and efficiencies uh, more than the sport has ever had before. So I think this team benefits from that evolution, mm -hmm. you know, first and foremost, and that by having the Kemlin who, you know, we wouldn't have the information. It's been 30, 40 years of his career. You know, he's a history book. So we're able to learn lessons, you know, um, expedited results rather than going down that, you know, maybe former Golden Knight pathway of having to learn for ourselves through thousand jump years over and over and over. And we just don't you know, have time for that to keep up. So, um, you know, I think we're benefited by also having a young team. That's one of the benefits of being the only veteran, I would youngest say. Youngest one ever, you said? Oh, yeah, yeah being 25, so yep, Skyler's the youngest one in the entire organization. And, uh, you know, that youth and uh, athleticism and drive that comes with a, a fresh team has been incredible. And again, uh, wind tunnels are really other unique part about this team is everyone can fly on their head, you know. Um, so all access flight is something that's in, um, you know, their, uh, their progression. And it just unlocks doors, you know. So you, you add all these variables together and it's just a, a healthy formula. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the most important one to me is drive again. So they're stepping in hungry for the result. The Golden Knights haven't been kind of in a place of glory for some time now, you know, since the eight-way team dissolved in um, – 2018 truly after Australia we haven't really come back from that and in four-way it was much earlier you know the girls had a good result in 2016 mm -hmm. but for four-way I think it was 2004 maybe the Golden Knights so we're, we're really ready to get back to that place for the for the unit representing the army I know the headline already for did you know that Nicholas Semlin is a history book <laughs> you better dust me off <laughs> That is already so. That is already out of <laughs> in the pocket. Um, you, you said you and Mike, um, you are still uh, doing double duties uh, for way and eight way, right? And and Nick and Mitch, you, you are alternate for the eight way team, correct? For the GKXP eight way team. How how do you manage that? Uh, let's ask see, Mike. You are in the active lineup. You know you and Jesse. Um, that totally different for we're here with uh, that um, freestyle development of techniques. Is it eight way is probably similar? It's much more. All right, we took a we did take a little um, break here, short interruption because as you can see the the twin order was just firing up and now they're lifting off. So it will be. You can probably hear us again now. 10 seconds, there she goes. They have a lot of planes here at, um, at the moment. Now there is a, there's a sky band from Sky of Chicago, a few twin orders from pretty good fleet. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> you're jumping twin orders and caravans, I guess. Yeah. All right, so let, let's go back to where the interruption happened and that was um, both when I was asking what? him doing both yeah exactly so it was a double duty situation that we have you know um, for Jesse and, and Mike um, and um, I was asking and I'm asking again you know how we, are you dealing with that actually you know the four-way free spirit hippie um, style <laughs> development <laughs> and this the strategy and the structures of, of the eight-way training which is probably a little bit different uh, than that how do you combine this? You know, as of, I mean, you have to switch back and forth with your mind. Though. Yes, it's definitely a challenge switching back and forth between the different formations. What is good is that there's some similarities between the two. They help complement each other. There's some lessons learned from eight-way that you can apply to four-way. 
and that definitely helps build the strength on both of them. So it, it's they complement each other well. Um, it is a challenge balancing the schedules between four way yes. and eight way. Obviously, both require training. Eight way requiring a lot of training leading up to the world meet this year. But we're doing well deconflicting between the two teams to ensure that both sides are able to get the training we need. Yeah, we are the only ones in the, in the eight-way team. Nobody else is. Well, Gina is doing four-way, of course. Yeah, so Gina is in the same situation with you. XPG four training for the world championship. And Gina would be the only one doing both events at the world. Oh, at the world meet. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. you're having the gold knights training is separate. So combining the two schedules and Gina's schedule. So actually, you are the eight-way team has to somehow integrate three different it's a lot more than that it's actually uh, I think that's the most uh, impressive part is the fact that we can find days where everyone's schedule aligns <laughs> if you think about the, the coaching schedule of you know Kurt Gina Andrew Drew Matt right I mean there's uh, John you know uh, with the military contracts to, to coaching uh, mm -hmm. and then the army schedule and requirements that we have on our side so I would say that's probably the um, you know a, a world meet win would be uh, it's going to be incredible, you know, have the opportunity again, but uh, just getting that those number of people together and conduct training and you know the average we weren't extremely happy with uh, in Norway. It was good, good milestone, but uh, obviously you have to train. You know, you got to find time, available time. So I think this year um, that's probably the number one priority for the Eight Way Project is efficiency, schedule efficiency. And you cannot underestimate John's position in also hosting the World Championship, right? Yeah, exactly. It's a little task to, a little side job, <laughs> yeah. organizing a World Championship. Well, anyway, so I, I think I can be very happy and proud that you found a day or, um, or enough days to compete at the Shamrock Showdown in the eight way and in four way, probably. So that is great news for everybody else. You know, everybody wanting. Eight-way competition, series eight-way competition, go to the Shamrock, you know, the best teams will be there. And four-way, the same thing, you know, Airspeed, Golden Knights, um, the, the, French, French. the French national teams, both of them. Yeah. So that field we have already in place, so, and, you know, there's time to come. That's great. Thanks for <laughs> arranging that, considering all the factors that you just pointed out, Jesse. Well, we are running um, late here now, so I, we don't want. I don't want to bore the audience too much. It's not boring, obviously, very interesting. But um, we we are we were beyond twenty minutes there already. So I think you want to finish your day too. Thank you very much for taking the extra time. And we didn't hear a word from from, <laughs> <laughs> from the, You can do the finishing the the, the finishing of the conversation. Well, Kurt, we we appreciate you having us and hosting us, you know, and doing this interview because you know we love to share our story and we love to be able to communicate the gratitude that we have for the people that help us along the way. Uh, so we really uh, we appreciate the time that you've taken out of your day to, to sit down with us. Thank you, and Mitch, you have the final word. Again, just like Nick said, thank you for taking the time out of your day, Nick. We couldn't be, uh, you know, more excited to have a coach like yourself. And I speak for the whole team here. We're extremely motivated and happy to be here to keep working towards the end goal. Uh, thanks again. Thank you very much, Felix. And have a nice rest of the day. Tomorrow is training again, right? So Absolutely. Yes. I guess you have to go to bed, the coach. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Hey, these hippie times. <laughs> <laughs> I like